just dreaming about all the different places we could take the van. It was awesome. Well, we can't go any of those places until we build the bed. Come on, let's go. Okay. Oh, it's, the van was, we were in outer space uh -huh. and underwater. That sounds nice. Hey you, yes you watching right now. If you've liked what you've seen so far and would like to see more videos by us, we need you to click on that subscribe button now. It's free, it's the easiest way to help us out, and it only takes a few seconds. So please take a few seconds and hit that button now. Thank you for your subscription. Now on with this week's episode. Now that we have the subfloor installed, like we showed you in the last episode, we're turning our attention to finishing the back of the van so we have a place to sleep. We started by covering the wheel wells. The first step was to remove the tie downs that came with the van. After carefully measuring everything out, I used 2x2s to begin making a frame for the box. I tried to avoid any potential noises from the box rubbing or vibrating against the wheel well, so I used temporary spacers to allow a bit of gap between the box and the wheel well. Always measure twice and cut once, or in my case, measure a third time, and then since you're slightly untrusting of yourself, measure again just to make sure. Everything was going swimmingly, until this happened. It's looking a little caterwonky. Oh, that's, that's how the kids are doing it nowadays. Oh yeah? It'll be good. Oh yeah? Oh, dear. <laughs> nice. As the shampoo bottle says, wash, rinse, and repeat for another box frame. Bingo Bango, another box. <laughs> Once I had the frames for the boxes finished, I began cutting the plywood pieces for the top and sides. If you happen to have a fast forward button during your build, use it. It makes building process a lot shorter. Take what you can get. During yet another run to the hardware store, we came across some treasure. Nice score. 50 cents worth of insulation. Always keep your eyes open while driving down the road. You never know what spare insulation you may find. If by chance you are unable to find any on the roadside, I'm sure you can always borrow some from your neighbor's walls. In all seriousness, don't steal insulation from your neighbor's walls. That's not cool. With our newfound foam insulation and leftovers from our subfloor project, we started insulating the boxes. We used Liquid Nails Projects adhesive to attach the insulation to the wood. We purposely chose not to use Rattle Trap or a similar product. We'll get into that in a future episode. Once boxes were insulated, we simply screwed them to the subfloor. Next, we spent some time rechecking our calculations for the height of the bed platform, taking into consideration clearance for bike storage below and headroom above the bed. It's always helpful if you've got some crazy will hunting math skills during this step, and every step in the van build process for that matter. What you doing, Steve? Thinking. For regular guys like me, sometimes you just gotta stare at a piece of wood until you figure out what to do with it. And if that doesn't work, you call in professional help. <laughs> Following the example of Outdoor Wanderlust and other YouTubers, I started building the bed frame using plus nuts. 
sometimes called cross nuts, to secure the wood to the van wall. There are a few tools available for installing plus nuts. But if you like to save money like me, you can just make your own tool using a configuration of a bolt, nut, washers, and wrenches. Once the plus nuts were securely installed, I cut 2x4s for the side supports of the bed. I screwed in the hanger bolts to mark the wood in the spots I needed to drill holes for the final bolts. I notched the wall support 2x4s for the horizontal bed supports and cut and placed the first piece. You might notice here that we have some insulation installed on the walls. We plan to talk about that in a future episode. Remember, nothing is square in a van, so never assume anything and measure many times. For example, the front horizontal 2x4 piece is longer than the back piece. Steve put the front support up for the bed and we laid in a few spare pieces of wood crosswise as a temporary support for the mattress so we could bring it into the van to see how everything would fit. After a knockdown drag out fight with the mattress, it fit perfectly. Wow. <laughs> this gave us a chance to climb up onto the bed and see how it fit and how we fit. So far, so good. Hopefully I'm done growing. We took advantage of having the mattress in place and used some random materials to try to get a feel for how our initial kitchen and workspace layout ideas might feel spatially. It was so fun getting a taste of what it could be like when we're further along with the project. We took everything out and got back to work. I used a line between the back wall support and the most forward support to help determine the height of the pieces that would sit on the wheel well boxes I had made earlier and started securing them to the van walls. With our design, there was plenty of existing manufactured holes in the van to utilize plus nuts except on one spot on the passenger's side where I needed to get a bit creative. Once I was finished with the passenger's side supports, I started working on the supports over on the driver's side wheel well box. In an attempt to eliminate friction and prevent the metal body of the van from acting as a thermal bridge to the inside of the van during extreme temperatures, 
We used three and a half inch polystyrene foam strips between the metal and wood when doing the final installation of the bed supports. If you happen to own a Craig pocket hole jig, or if you're like us and have a great neighbor friend who's willing to let you borrow one, we highly recommend using it for joining wood like shown here. Steve finished cutting the horizontal supports for the bed platform, and then we moved on to cutting and securing the top pieces using 19 30 seconds inch plywood. We designed the platform to extend out past the back of the bed, matching the contour of the rear doors to give us a ledge to act as a nightstand of sorts and a perch for the cats for looking out the window. What's the Boy Scout rule? Always cut towards yourself. <laughs> we used cardboard to create a template for cutting the edge. After cutting, we sanded the plywood to make sure there were no rough edges. Getting larger pieces to fit into place in the van with its confined space is always a challenge. Can you imagine if we finish the walls first? Yeah. And as seems to be the norm, our first cut is not the last. We had to trim the back plywood piece one more time. We were unwilling to take the piece back out to cut it, or we were just lazy, so we cut it in the van. Here, wait, 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 here, do it, like, stop. Yeah, I think you're fine. Go ahead and close it. Nice. I think you're good. Nice. And va van boom, we have a bed platform. We have a bed platform. That fits like a glove. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching!